I said I was going to review something special, and boy, do I got something. Jason the Wheeled Warriors. Jason the Wheeled Warriors was another show produced by Deke in 1985. It was based on Mattel's Wheeled Warriors toy line, which was a bunch of badass looking vehicles. The best part was their accessories had a universal peg system, so you can swap them and make all kinds of crazy designs. So how do you make a show based on this? Well, they did come with little figures, but... Uh... Yeah, gonna need more than that. Can't call this generic brown jumpsuit guy in the Wheeled Warriors. But man, did they ever make something out of it. You might recall when I did my episode on cartoon intros that I mentioned this show had one of the best intros and theme songs ever. And it still does, and we're gonna watch it. I don't care if it's filler, and I don't care if it's lazy. It's my 50th episode, I do what I want. Roll it! so good yeah man that track rocks yes yes it does not only does it have a catchy and memorable theme but the visuals are so crazy that it gives you no choice but to watch and see what this show's all about it's genius it's diabolical while i'm on the subject this show does something you rarely see in cartoons during its time the end theme is a completely different original song keep on Usually, you just get a rehashed version of the main theme, but they must have been really into this show when they were developing it. Shuki Levy and Hayam Saban, you guys are gods among theme song writers. Well, the theme song is certainly memorable, but people seem to forget there's a show attached to it. So how is it? Okay? In the distant future, I'm assuming it's the future, a scientist named Audric was performing experiments to produce a plant that could end starvation. When suddenly, and I do mean suddenly, a solar flare somehow causes the plants to mutate into evil sentient creatures called the Monster Minds that can also turn into vehicles. Don't you hate it when that happens? Audric sends his squire a magical suit of armor named Oon to bring a magic root to his son Jace. The root has the power to stop the Monster Minds for good, but they need to unite it with another root Audric has for that to happen. They're joined by Gillian, a wizard who created the battle vehicles to fight off the Monster Minds, and Flora, a little girl who's a plant, apparently. Watch what you're doing! Are you alright? Thank goodness. I was afraid you were hurt. Can't you feel its pain? She also has a flying fish named Brock. The giant flying fish is never explained, by the way. They get a ride from a mercenary named Herc, and they head off in his ship, the Pride of the Skies, to find Audric and put an end to the monster mind threat once and for all. Were you paying attention to all that? Well, if not, I'm gonna run it by you one more time! The show is about a galaxy being threatened by evil sentient plant guys who are also monster trucks, while a guy named Jace, a wizard slash mechanic, a girl who's a plant with a flying fish, a living suit of armor, and a mercenary in a space pirate ship, search the galaxy for Jace's father to unite their penance and save the universe! That's a lot of plot! 
On top of that, it's kind of a rarity, especially for Deke, because most of their shows were blank of the day kinds of shows. Ghostbusters was a ghost of the day show. Cops was a crime of the day show. But Jason the Wheeled Warriors had an overarching story with a long-term goal. Unfortunately, it's too complicated for its own good, but I'll get into that as we go along, because we need to address one major problem with this show right off the bat. The acting. Now for an 80s cartoon, you can't really expect a lot, but it should at least be better than this! Gillian, the vines are climbing higher onto our wall of light. It's powered by the sun, and they're blocking it. It can't survive much longer. Then please, hurry with the vehicles. We have to be ready when Father finally comes to lead us out of here. Yeah, luckily the main cast does get better, but some of the people they meet on their journey... Why are you doing that? I'm making sure they can't steal any of Dad's work. But isn't the Lightning League coming to help us? Only because they want that route. They're as much our enemy as the Monster Minds. You like that? Well, here's another one. But why, Father? Sorry, Darren. Watch out, Father! Seriously, was that the best take? I am very upset by this bad acting! They also have bizarre reactions to stuff that happens sometimes. In this episode, Herc gets infected with a parasite that turns him into a jerk or whatever. Watch this. Something wrong with your hand, Herc? Maybe Gillian could help. Bug off, weedhead. Ah! Chase? In a second, Flora. How do you not react to that? If I saw someone push a little girl like that, I'd start wailing on him. Here's my favorite. In this scene, Jace and Flora see the Monster Mind's headquarters for the first time. What is that? Jace, I sense a strong evil force. Well, anyway, let's head back to the barge. And the award for best reaction to something you just saw goes to Jace Lightwheels, everyone! You bland motherfucker, you've earned it, buddy! How the hell do you react like that to seeing something like this? Oh my god, look at that horrible evil thing over there! Oh well, let's go home. Then there was a bunch of technical problems, like bad lip dubbing. Well, that takes care of the Monster Mind Zoom. It sure does. We did it, Master. And even some weird editing. I'm afraid her voice is gone, Jace. It's not permanent, though. Her voice will return a few months, a year, but it will return. No one has ever before done what all of you have done. You should be proud. These problems are to be expected from a show from this era, but there's some other things about the show that really bothered me. So in the first episode before they head off to fight the Monster Minds, Gillian gives Jace a magic ring that belonged to a group of fighters called the Lightning League. The ring seems to do whatever they need it to do. It doesn't seem to have any rules and it gets them out of any situation. The thing is, after 65 episodes, I could probably count on one hand how many times Jace actually uses the ring. It was frustrating watching him getting into trouble and not use the ring. I was sitting there going, use the ring! Use the ring! Use the- use the ring! You have a magical MacGuffin device wrapped around your finger! Use it, you idiot! I guess it doesn't really matter, though, because everything always seems to work out a little too well for Jace. He's also very headstrong and determined, and he doesn't kill. He's a borderline Gary Stu. Might as well talk about the other characters. Gillian is probably my favorite character overall. He's a wizard that also has engineering skills. He's always building things or just magicking technology to work. He's just cool. Oon is kind of a typical tag-along character. He's called an Eternal Squire. The concept is lightly touched on, but not explained very well. I guess they're supposed to be fearless guardians that protect people of importance. Too bad Jace got the one programmed like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Oh, Master! Did it do something? Yikes! He's for real! Gangway! 
Though he will come through when they need him. He even sacrifices himself a few times. I said before that Flora is a plant, so she's pretty delicate. If they end up on a planet not fit for plants, she's usually affected by it. She can also talk to plants and even some animals, which makes her useful because she can sense when the monster mines are close. Then there's Herc. He has one motivation. Money. Autopilot on. Now, I kind of like to look at my gold. <laughs> oh, isn't that the prettiest sight in the universe? The gold is mine! <laughs> he also likes to run his mouth and try to be funny. This show mercifully avoids puns, but when they do happen, they're usually from him. The worst moment was when they were on this planet of cat people they were helping fight off the monster mines. Another time, uh, Sawboss tried to enslave a whole galaxy. Hey, if that sort of thing happened here, it'd be a real, a real <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> it'd be cataclysmic. <laughs> But I'll bet you can fight them off with <laughs> catapults. <laughs> I bet it would be an uncategorical mess. <laughs> By the way, what do you guys call this place? The catacombs? <laughs> Some people have no sense of humor. Oh good, it works both ways. Though I'll admit, one moment was kind of funny. I can't believe it. I'm surrounded by clowns. You call? Beat it. There's also these, like, robot dogs. I think they're Flora's pets, but I don't know why they're there. They weren't even part of the toy line or anything. They are so cute. Can we get one? No, we got enough wacky side characters on this show. This room is getting too crowded. There's also a lot of things that are just odd about this show. Like, they're supposed to be in a setting where space travel is possible, and they have advanced technology and robots, but apparently the preferred video format is still VHS tapes. Ha! I knew it was a superior format! They laughed at me! They all laughed at me! Well, who's laughing now, huh? Who's laughing now? Stupid tracking. No, no, analog is still superior. You just, you just gotta fiddle with it. One of the main problems with this show was that nothing was ever really explained. Stuff just kind of happens and things would exist without any rhyme or reason. In one episode, they're on a planet full of giant toys that's run by some kid. Why is he there? How did he build all this? That's Josh. He built all this. He's been playing with it over a thousand years. He's a thousand years old? How is he a thousand years old and still a kid? Stuff like this is just never explained. Even the very plot of this show feels underdeveloped. Like, exactly what was Audric's experiment? How does a solar flare turn a bunch of plants into evil humanoids? What exactly is the magic root and why is it the only thing that can stop the monster minds? They seem to do okay just fighting them head on. There's a lot of great ideas here, but it leaves you with way too many questions. Okay, time to talk about some good things in the show. The villains, though pretty one-dimensional, are awesome. They're evil plant guys that transform into road warrior style vehicles. They also grow vines across space that literally strangle the galaxy, sapping it of nutrients and enslaving whole worlds. Not only that, they can sprout clones of their vehicle forms through the vines to terrorize planets. And when they sprout, you can see their brains and organs as they form. This is creepy and gross and weird, and I love it. It's scary, too. I mean, just imagine minding your own business when a monster truck just grows out of the ground and starts chasing you. Yeah, this is some of my best work. I wrote it after taking PCP and going to a monster truck rally. <laughs> For three weeks, I thought the Bigfoot truck was stalking me. <laughs> Kids, don't do drugs. I also love the name of their leader, Saw Boss. That's the best villain name ever. I want to see someone start a heavy metal band called the Monster Minds with costumes based on their designs. Then I want to see them have a battle of the bands with Guar. That would kick ass. Then there's all the vehicle fights. After all, we gotta show off the toys. They're pretty awesome. You ever want to see a truck suplex another truck? Well, here you go. 
What's cool about the Lightning League vehicles is that they can swap weapons, just like the toys. And they can be operated remotely if they don't have a driver. I need some help! Lightning League vehicles, get out here! Command, I'm calling. Trailblazer, up in the air! Command, I'm calling. But, of course, they're not very realistic. Yeah, drills don't work that way. So because the show relied on an overarching story, it wasn't as tedious to marathon as, let's say, cops. Most episodes involved them traveling to distant worlds, looking for Audric, following his clues, and getting closer to finding him each time. Sometimes missing him by just a few moments. Though I have to admit, stories like this get kind of frustrating. They did end up meeting him in one episode, but then he gets zapped by a stray transport beam, and then they gotta go find him all over again. Damn it! So close! Now, sadly, many of the first episodes were not very good. A lot of weird stuff happens that's kinda hard to follow or even describe due to bad narrative, and they come across bizarre stuff like psychic talking fish. Things picked up about episode 15, The Bloodstone, which was one of the few episodes I remember when I first saw the show as a kid. Sawboss sends a giant spider to a planet to steal the energy from a giant magical stone, but as it loses its power, it starts crystallizing the planet and everyone on it. It's pretty intense. Herc! Flora! Too late for us, Hotshot. Never thought I'd end up a museum piece. It's up to you. Good luck, Chick! There's another episode about a planet of people who are forced to strip their planet of sustainable soil to ward off the monster mine vines, but left them with no resources. Not sure if that was the smartest decision, but it gives a good idea of how much of a threat the monster mines are. About halfway through the series, there's a five-part story arc called The Liberty Stone, where Sawboss teams up with a powerful wizard that looks like a character from Fur Affinity. Throughout the episodes, he steals mystical items that he tries to use to pretty much end existence. And most of the fifth episode gets pretty trippy. But most of the better episodes come toward the end of the series. In one episode, they meet some remaining members of the Lightning League who had become arrogant and relied on their past victories to keep their reputation. But once the Monster Minds attack, Jace helps return them to their former glory. There's another episode where they get caught in a time vortex and meet Audric as a young man. But somehow my friends and I traveled back through time. Pure. Believe him, Audric. Kill him. <gasps> this is your son. Hey, come on, I like you guys, but if this is a joke, it isn't funny. No, Aud Father, it isn't. It's serious, you must believe me, the future of the universe depends on it. Whoa, easy, you're gonna give the guy future shock. They try to warn him about the experiment that creates the monster minds, but unfortunately you can't change the past. Might be for the best, though. After all, you don't want to risk never existing. In one of the last ones, we see the return of a few characters from previous episodes. This was kind of refreshing. I think the show was really lacking in memorable recurring characters. I think the real centerpiece of this show was seeing all the unique worlds. There was one planet that was a giant bipolar supercomputer. And another one was an enormous beehive. How big is the honeycomb? Honeycomb's big! Yeah, yeah, yeah! It's not small! No, no, no! Thing is, most of the planets they go to are like magical medieval kingdoms. And usually the civilizations they encounter were populated by humans. There were only a few times where we saw some unique alien races. A little more variety would have been nice. Okay, we need to address the elephant in the room here. So, remove most of the weird stuff in this show. Does the plot seem a little bit familiar? You know, a boy and an old wise man getting a ride from a space mercenary to go save the universe? Resembles, maybe, Star Wars? At first, I didn't really think much of it, but as the series went on, I saw more things that were clearly borrowed from Star Wars. The Monster Mind base is a sphere that somewhat resembles a Death Star. Herc is pretty much Han Solo. They never mention Earth or any familiar planets, so it's safe to say this isn't our galaxy. At least twice, I saw Jace use a weapon that resembles a lightsaber. And they even used the sound effect for it. 
And I know this show came out first, but does that magic ring seem kind of familiar? May the Schwartz be with you. Then there's this. Okay, that was blatant. Yeah, there's no denying they took ideas from Star Wars, but I didn't think it was any worse than, say, Star Chaser. Sure, things popped up every once in a while, but it wasn't constantly happening. It still held itself up on its own merits. Besides, there's still one big problem with this show, and it's the problem with any show that has a long-term goal. It has no ending. That's right, the final episode wasn't about them meeting Audric and ending the threat of the Monster Minds. It was about some space pilot seeking revenge against the Monster Minds for destroying his world, so he decides to try and defeat Sawboss and the Monster Minds once and for all by colliding the planet he's on with another planet, even at the cost of countless innocent people. But when Sawboss evacuates, he realizes what a mistake he made and sacrifices himself to stop the collision. What a dark final episode. Now, there was supposed to be a movie that was going to wrap up the series, but it seems the toy line didn't do well enough to justify it. That's a shame, because I would have loved to have seen it. Just like Cops, I can see Jason the Wheeled Warriors make a comeback. With a little spit and polish, I think this show could become something really good. But sadly, I doubt it'll ever happen. Then again, if Power Lords can make a comeback, I guess anything is possible. And shout out to the two other people that remember Power Lords. Too bad this didn't have a show. If you want to check out this show, you can. It was first released on DVD by Shout Factory, but they only released half the series and then stopped. But luckily, Mill Creek Entertainment got the rights to the show, and as of this year, you can get the whole series on DVD. And pretty cheap. Though there's a reason for that. Yeah, these cookie jar DVDs aren't the best quality. Though they did improve on the artwork a little bit. I don't really like that they made Flora look mean like that. She was very kind and gentle. I can't ever see her making that face. Still better than Volume 2, though. What the hell is this? Couldn't they get any more original illustrations? Or at least take a better screenshot? Jace looks like he just saw boobs for the first time. And who the hell is this guy? There's a lot of layout inconsistencies, too. I prefer my DVD volumes to look uniform. It just feels more professional. But that's just me nitpicking. At least I have the whole series now. You know, as clumsy as this show was, there was still something about it I really liked, but I wasn't sure what it was at first. But then it hit me. They took a toy line of weird vehicles that had nothing to do with anything, and they built a universe around it. It wasn't perfect, but it did feel very ambitious. At times, I even forgot that this was supposed to be selling toys. With other shows, the product is always the centerpiece and constantly shoved in your face. But there was no Jace action figure. The characters were all original creations. It was the vehicles, and though they were prominent, they were seen maybe half the time. It's almost as if they tried to stay focused on the story. I've always said that just because a show is supposed to sell a product doesn't mean it has to suck or lack creativity. And I think Jace and the Wheeled Warriors is a prime example of that. Well, it's about time you gave proper praise to some quality entertainment. And here I thought you were only about those dreadful American cartoons. Uh, what are you talking about? Of course I'm talking about this fine, entertaining anime that you found. Surprisingly, I've never heard of it. But it looks like it ranks right up there with Beast King Go Lion and Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Clearly, you have finally realized that anime is far superior, so allow me to be the first to welcome you to the dark side. <laughs> Uh, actually, it isn't an anime. <laughs> what? Well, it was animated in Japan, sure, but it was actually an American and French collaboration. You just complimented a Western cartoon! Oh, God. Um, are you okay? I, I don't know who I am anymore. I, 
I, I need to be alone for a while. Eh, he'll be fine. Happy 50th episode! The ring is Bobkiss. I found it in a crackerjack box.